Hello, I'm Am Jim Rakai, and I got kind of a riddle to start this video off for you. And I promise I think there's actually an answer. So let me ask you, what's mightier, the pen or the sword? And when it comes to One Piece, I really don't think our answers matter too much because I believe that for Oda, this is a trick question. Why choose one when you can have one basically force the work of the other? And that's what this video is going to really be about and kind of the true intentions and purpose and modus operandi of the secret marine organization sword because the way that they operate in the shadows and what exactly they do has been clear since page one and if you don't understand what i'm saying please stick around for the rest of the video i'm so close to 200 subscribers so please consider subscribing and liking the video if you're if you're interested in weekly one piece and berserk and hopefully soon more series but with that my name is amgen rakai and let's get into how the sword organization is all about using words. And we're actually gonna key in on a lot of stuff that's relevant in the One Piece story right now, like the truth about the Rocky Port incident and God Valley and all sorts of things like that. But I said we gotta start at page one because this stuff has been evident since then. And I really meant it. So let's look at page one very carefully. It's the page where Roger is executed and we get the whole legendarium about the Pirate King and their life and their duties, so to speak. And then uh, all about the, you know, Oh, you want my treasure? It, I left it all in one place. And then he gets executed. Now let's forget about the fact that most of this page is just lies to begin with. But specifically this execution scene. Do you notice what's going on with it? And this actually extends to every version of Gold Rogers execution that we've actually seen. This same pattern here. And that's that we don't actually see him die. Now I know that sounds crazy, but in this third panel of the manga, it's too far away for us to really make out what's going on. And even the whole, these guards cutting off his head doesn't really totally make sense from like the angle and the way they're holding the swords to me at least. And it's actually implied in the anime and by Rayleigh later on that Gold Rogers is actually executed by getting stabbed through the heart and not getting his head chopped off, which to me is kind of furthering this whole idea of misinformation and kind of bending the truth and rewriting reality but in truth the real reason that we know that gold d roger is being executed here and that he's actually getting his head chopped off and that he's dying is because this word bubble up here tells us that it is basically since we can't actually see what's happening on the execution platform the words are doing the work of the sword. And I'll just read the uh, English Viz official translation here. Not surprisingly, the final words he spoke before they lopped off his head inspired adventurers throughout the world to sail the seas. Now, what I'm getting at here is that the words are doing the work of the sword for it. On this page, we cannot tell that Roger's getting his head cut off, but we know that he's getting beheaded here because the words tell us. In essence, all the graphic violence that's actually happening in the scene, we can't really see, but its meaning is being conveyed with the dialogue on the page itself. And this is the very first example in the One Piece manga of words acting as swords. And by now it should be obvious that the word sword, take off the S from the front, put it on the back of the, of the word, and it's words. And that whole first page thing might sound like a stretch at first, but it's actually one of the fundamental themes of the entirety of chapter one is this idea of swords not actually being used by someone in a position of power. Haguma, all in chapter one, threatens everybody with his sword and it really almost goes to prove how weak he is. And Shanks, conversely, proves how strong he is, never actually drawing his sword, even though we clearly see that he has one. In chapter one, everything around Shanks is done by someone else. Lucky Roo takes out this dude, who also happens to be the same dude talking about the all blue in Sanji's flashback, which is crazy, but real. And then we have Ben Beckman using his gun, not actually firing it, but using it as a bat of sorts, to defend Shanks as well. We see Shanks definitively with the sword here. We don't see him use it for a couple hundred chapters, but we see him with the sword. We know he's the captain 
Christian, so we know that, you know, conceivably being an avid manga reader, even at age 11 for myself, I was pretty sure he was probably the strongest person in the crew because he was the captain. Whether that's true or not now, is, it doesn't matter. Perception-wise, in the first chapter, the idea that he's the strongest one there and he's not really lifting a finger because it's not about, that's not what strength is about, essentially. But I also think that the main kind of part is that is like, like they say in the Game of Thrones. Why do we pretend kings hold all the power? Power resides where men believe it resides. It's a trick, a shadow on the wall. Power rests where men and people believe that it rests. And if you believe Shanks is powerful, you're doing all this work for him to keep him happy or whatever. It's one example to me of words essentially doing the work of the sword. And in this case, it's Shanks, the all-powerful and great Shanks, and his crew is doing everything for him. His sword isn't needed. His words make everything happen. And in, the, in chapter one, at least, his unspoken words. But actually, every time that we see Shanks, Words are involved. I know that kind of sounds stupid, but we see him specifically discussing with Whitebeard trying to negotiate him not going to war with the Marines or sending Ace to after Blackbeard. We see him negotiate with the Marines at Marine Ford to stand down and not continue the war and all that stuff. And then, of course, we've seen Shanks sneak into Mary Joa and talk to the Gorsei. And most recently, I think, you know, it's kind of up for interpretation, but he definitely sends some sort of message to Ryugoku in the most recent chapters outside of Wano with his hockey. So to me, politicking and using words are kind of Shanks' M.O., but I don't think that's totally what I'm going to be talking about with S.W.O.R.D. I think it's just a hint to all that. S.W.O.R.D. I think is specifically a branch of the military that works with the press to create division and strife and to keep the public disoriented. Just like how the real news, you know, probably works in our world. That S.W.O.R.D. is just kind of this influence in the press and in the One Piece world, any sort of publication or information of any sort, I think, is at play and vulnerable to this cutting up and editing of the intel, all under the direction of various branches of the organization S.W.O.R.D. within the Marines. That continues to keep the status quo the way it is, and it uses words and false stories and all sorts of things to keep it that way and to keep the powers that be stay in power in the One Piece world. And we've actually seen that happen with a maybe former confirmed member of S.W.O.R.D. before the X Drake and Kobe reveal a few hundred chapters ago, which actually tied into all of this stuff. The very first time that we see S.W.O.R.D. officially mentioned in the story is over a radio communications between Kobe and X Drake. And funnily enough, that chapter 956 is actually titled Big News. Okay. But before that chapter, the only real clue we had to a member of S.W.O.R.D. was this tattoo on Akainu and the idea that maybe he used to be part of this organization, which really doesn't jive too well with me, the idea that Kobe would be in it and then he would be in it too and they would have similar ideals. But I do believe that like a sword has two sides and two edges, there's one blade in the Marines that's good and then one faction of it blade side in the Marines that's bad. And Akainu might have been on the bad side. But when we first meet Akainu, one, it's in the O'Hara flashback where he's trying to get rid of words and knowledge. That's one clue. But when we actually meet him in person at Marine Ford, he lies to Squardo using words to convince him to betray Whitebeard and stab him and, and do all this stuff or whatever, but using misinformation to turn allies against each other and create division when there was none before. That's like exactly what I'm talking about with the sword stuff. And Akainu does it right there. He, he even technically does it in the O'Hara thing because they tell the people, you know, they tell the scholars of O'Hara we're going to save you in these boats and then when they escape on them, they kill them there. So it was like a death trap. Uh, lies leading to death, which is what I believe that he's all about and what sword has been all about. And then to me, another big hint to this two sides of the same sword in the Marines thing is actually at the end of Marine Ford with Kobe's words actually changing the hearts of the soldiers a little bit or at least changing the tides of time or whatever you want to quantify it as. His words against the actual physical violence against the Kainu did win there. So maybe that's a hint in the overall story about the end winning side of S.W.O.R.D. in Marines. But for right now at least, I, I still think that there is this division and clash and perhaps that's why Kuzan left. The Marine 
means during the time skip because he was maybe the leader that was set up on one side of sword and a, and a kind who was the other and kind of in conclusion what i'm saying is that the weapon of propaganda is used by the marines and the world government through this sword organization and i believe that god valley and this rocky port incident are two parallel examples of the same exact thing happening twice in the one piece world now the first time that this rocky port incident is mentioned is in chapter 700 after the punk hazard arc and it's kind of talked about in conjunction with law being the mastermind of it and it seems like maybe something with that and then sending the marines 100 pirate hearts is what got him his job as a seven warlord now here on my channel i'm always looking for symbolic clues of things that hint at foreshadowing to the future of the story and all this stuff and chapter 700 starts with there's not much more clear of an example of this where there's literally newspapers flying from the sky telling lies and, and plans that people have set up that the pirates that we know law and everybody have set up in this paper fooling the people all that stuff all this is a plan of, about Doflamingo not being a seven warlord and all that stuff uh, being revealed in the paper all of these things are manufactured headlines that are literally being dropped on citizens in the one piece world to create an effect somewhere else in the one piece world for characters that we either know or don't know to capitalize on in this case it's characters we know it's the straw hat pirates another absolutely ridiculously dumb hint i think to all of this is the character brand new himself the name brand new only can mean brand new like a new thing making new things and new information available which is what his purpose is as a reader every time we see him we're getting new information well i wonder how much that extends to the one piece world in full and going into the actual definition real quickly of the word brand new the common conception is that it's from the word firebrand or branding iron such as a forging tool or something like that but branding iron really makes me think of the world government and the celestial dragons and all that stuff and maybe all of this information funneling out in ways that benefit them but back to this whole rocky port incident thing it's actually remarkably similar to what we know about god valley one pirate that was a big name for a while is taken down in the past we know that it's rox dizabek we learned in the newest chapter that this wang z or ochoku was who was taken down at the rocky port incident in the current timeline we have a parallel between this miraculous hero of the marines that's created in the past it was garp and now it's somehow kobe where even the seclusion inhabitants of Amazon Lily have even heard about his heroism and I'm just gonna say it here but I don't think it'll make a whole lot of sense to most people but the parallels are way deeper than that in that Blackbeard is kind of the gold Roger equivalent who's taken over the shine of this era the spotlight of this era and the other member the mastermind of it all being Trafalgar Law in our time but I, in the past being Whitebeard I believe is a very appropriate parallel but there are a lot more ties and intricacies to all of that that i'll have to get into in future videos and look forward to starting with i have one coming out next week called the uh, share for the grand lie that i think hopefully you all enjoy if you watch this whole video let me know what you think in the comments about this whole idea of swords and, and using the press to make weapons and all sorts of things like that my name is amjin rakai thank you so so much for watching the video and i'll talk to you all later Bye bye